It's always difficult to know how long to train a neural network for. Early stopping can let you do this somewhat automatically. We're gonna see how to use early stopping in PyTorch in this video. I'm running here in Colab, and I am going to run this part of the code that I always do for initialization. So this is going to detect which accelerator we have. In this case, we're going to be using CUDA because this is what Colab has available. All right, early stopping, what this is good for is when you just train endlessly, you're going to see that your training error, your error across the training set, keeps going down, 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 down. It starts slowing as it goes down, but it, it just kind of keeps on decreasing. At some point though, the error that you're getting on the validation set actually starts to go up or just doesn't, doesn't track as closely anymore to the training set error. This is overfitting setting in because it's starting to now memorize the training set and getting a better and better error, but it's not it's not generalizing. We would like to be able to stop right at this point where they, they tend to diverge. You don't always know exactly when you've hit that point. So you put something into this called patient and patience is how far you're allowing it to go for these two to keep diverging, not seeing any improvement anymore. And once you reach the end of the patience, there's another option that we'll see where we're able to restore the weights back to where the the validation set had the lowest error. This is how you segment your data for this sort of thing. You have your entire data set. You're gonna break off a certain piece of it, maybe 20% for a validation set or a test set, whatever you, you wanna call that. And then you're going to use the training set to train or fit the model. And then finally, you're gonna evaluate the final model with that validation set. So that validation set, you are evaluating it at each epoch or however often you designate to value it because you don't wanna just rescore it all the time because it, it does take time to do particularly on larger data sets. This is the code for early stopping. PyTorch does not have an early stopping feature built into it, so we do have to provide one. This is a design consistency with PyTorch. They want to give you the absolute in control and not really dictate to you how these things happen. In other machine learning libraries, neural network libraries that I've worked with, there's typically an early stopping just built in. You just set a flag, but here you have to actually define it. And you can see that the class that I created here, this is one that I use frequently myself. I define the patience by default to be five. The minimum delta is just how, how big of a, of a change, an improvement in performance do we need for it to count? Often I just set this to zero. And then restore best weights. Yeah, I, I always wanna restore the best weights. Go back to where the validation set was the smallest error. And we just call this each time through. We're dealing with the first time it's, it gets called, it's just going to establish what the best loss was. There's only been one loss, so it would be that would be the best one. We deal with cases where the loss has has improved. So we, in this case, increment, increment the counter, let it know that it has found an improvement. And then if we have exceeded the counter, where basically we've, we've not improved, patience is gone, we're going to trigger early stopping and we're going to stop. So I'll run this just so that it's defined. We'll use it in a moment. This is the data that we're going to load. We're going to use the Iris data set. I'll go ahead and run it. We've used the Iris data set before. It's the classic tabular data with, with the three flowers. And we convert this into, into tensors and we set it up so that we're going to have a, we're going to use a batch size. We're going to give it 16 elements at once per batch before we update the gradients, before we use the gradients to update the weights. We create a basic neural network, 50 hidden layer one, 25 hidden layer two, just like before. We do the PyTorch 2.0 compile. That's really nice. That makes things faster. Probably not so much faster for this simple of a neural network, but nonetheless. And then we, we create our early stopping class. Most of this code is really sort of the same except that we are now starting to look at the, the early stopping. So if the early stopping, we pass, we pass the model and the validation loss to it. And if we do hit the early stopping, then, then we stop. We set as done equal to true. Otherwise we continue processing the batches and, and epochs. 
An epoch is a complete pass through the training set, whereas steps are a complete pass through that batch size, 16, that we defined earlier. So we'll go ahead and run this. I'm also using TQDM to give these nice progress bars so that we can keep track of things as it, as it goes through. You don't necessarily have to use this on every, every model, but I do show you how to put some progress tracking into here if you would like to. Once it's done, we can run it and we see that the loss is really very good. That's log loss. And we can see that the accuracy is extremely well, 100%. Let's do the same thing, but with regression. So here we're going to load the auto MPG data set again. This is 1970s era cars. We're predicting the miles per gallon on these gas guzzling giants that they used to make. We're using cylinders, displacement, horsepower, all these car statistics. And we are going to then split it into training and test sets, create the tensors, we're going to use a batch size of 16 again, and we're, we're going to load the, the, the data sets into training and test using a pretty simple neural network, just like before, 50-50, 25, and 25. There's no soft max because we're doing a regression neural network. We compile it again for the maximum performance. We're using mean square error log loss and early stopping again. And just like before, we're checking the early stopping right here. If we've hit it, then we, we halt the training. We're also using TQDM to provide these nice bars, progress bar. This one trains a little bit longer, and then we run it to evaluate the root mean square. This is pretty good. This is about where you land usually with this auto MPG data set, plus or minus 2.89 miles per gallon. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything with this course or other future courses that I add, other projects, all in machine learning and artificial intelligence. If this video was useful, please give it a like. Thank you very much.